Welcome to another episode of the Backyard Preacher Podcast. This is Nate Sprout, your irreverent reverend, coming at you again for another awesome podcast experience. As of late, um, I've been talking about some serious issues. Um, the other day's podcast talked about, you know, the NFL, the kneeling situation, before that, we got on the um, the new eon of Christianity. It's the six part series, which I encourage you to revisit and uh, get it into your head. And hopefully, if I'm not so lazy, I can get that out on Amazon and Kindle as well. But I want to get on a lighter note. Right now, we have so much division. Not just within the church, but within America as a whole. We are a divided country. We are a country that is refusing to listen. We are a country that's refusing to respect one another. We are a country divided. But even though, even though we are divided, I think I know that we must live in joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus walked this earth and I don't think he could have done what he did without the joy of the Lord, without knowing the glory that was set before him he would not have known of such. He would not have been able to go through so much. He would not have been able to endure the cross. But the joy of the Lord was there. When he was thinking about you, the joy was there. We must be happy. We must be, regardless of the situations, we must be happy. We must love one another. There's so much we can do that's hateful and argumentative. I've been arguing um, or debating, whatever you want to call it, about the kneeling uh, on Facebook, and I'm, I'm about done with that. I'm, I'm moving on. And it's not that I'm moving on because I'm not willing to listen or I want to not address the issues. Is that we're divided. And there's, you're not going to always win people over, and they're not always going to win you over. But you, we can't even come to a place of understanding. So we got to just not let the devil steal our joy. Over this past couple of weeks, I've, I'm just going to admit to you, I've, I've been in a state of depression. I, I haven't been all that well. I've had some family things going on, relationship issues going on, have not been all that well. It, it's, I've been in a state of depression. But I'm refusing today with you, I'm refusing today with you to not let the devil steal my joy as a Christian. Even if you're not a Christian, whatever is stealing your joy, whatever it may be, could be finances, could be relationships, could be your kids, could be health issues. We have to remember this, because if you're listening to me now, I think that you know that I believe in a supernatural world, a world in which we don't really know a whole lot about, the unknown, the unseen. And yet, why do I like to dive into this supernatural world to try to cross the abyss to see and to learn about the architecture of it all. And that makes me happy. 
to know that the very seat, the very chair that I'm sitting in is not even, it could not even, it may not even exist. It only exists in my mind's eye because my mind perceives it to be a chair and I'm sitting in it. Just a bunch of atoms bouncing around. That's all we are really is a bunch of atoms just bouncing around. But what's so unique about it, it's so spiritual. Because we are all spirit, everything's spirit. And I think when we grasp that, that, that spiritual love, that it almost is like you hugging yourself and just joy and peace and love. We need that. We need to get out there and be happy. I, I, I was talking today and I was um, explaining a little bit about the whole idea of what can we do just in general to help race relations? What can the average middle class white American do to help race relations? You know, nothing about the ghetto, you know, nothing about poverty, but what can you do instead of arguing about African Americans taking a knee during a football game during the anthem? What can we do to actually benefit and do something positive instead of spew off negativity? You know what? I think one of the simplest things that we can do is just be happy. And you might be saying to yourself, and rightly so, Nate, that's great. I want to be happy, but I don't. Things suck right now. I hear you, dude. I hear you. Because things suck in my life right now, to be honest with you. They really do. I just got a call the other day that I didn't get picked up for a great job, a life-changing job, or so I thought. You know, doing something within the field that I went to school for six years. To do something within social services, something within ministry, something in, in helps. Instead, I'm, you know, I still get to help people. I still get to put a smile on people's faces because I work in customer service to feed myself. And so this podcast takes off. Lord willing, soon. But we all hate rejection. We all feel like, what did I do to deserve this? And believe me, we've done many things. I've done many things to deserve exactly where I'm at right now. As a matter of fact, I'm more than blessed to be where I'm at right now. I'm more than blessed. I could be in a lot worse spots. But instead, I'm free. I've been battling addictions, and I won't lie, alcohol, gambling, things of these natures, that's why I'm the backyard preacher, they're not things I'm proud of, these are things I'm battling, and I have battled in the past, but I'm sober today. I'm working on myself. So you may say, well, Reverend Nate, things must be great. No, I'm telling you, life kind of sucks. I'm broke. But you know what? I can choose to stay in that mindset. I can choose to stay, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to get worse. Or I can choose to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I am going to be glad in Him. I can be happy. I can be joyful. I can shout with praise unto God Almighty, our Lord. I want to read a bit of scripture after all. This is a religious program, although it's not your mother's religious program. I didn't really do my intro today. It's from Colossians, the first chapter of Colossians, 
verse chat verse 15 is that yeah 15 it's talking about the supremacy of the son of god the son is the image of the invisible god i had a friend ask me the other day how do i explain god to my child well kind of difficult Jesus is how you explain God to your child, I guess, would be my answer. Because Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. When we read about Jesus, when we understand his life, we become more like him, or yeah, we want to become more like him, but we learn, we, well, we understand the creator of the universe. We understand God. For in all him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. These are talking about spiritual dimensions and beings that sometimes I try to pry in and understand. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but I do. Hey, God created them. He created us. He put us in this physical plane. Why not step into the astral plane once in a while? I am an esoteric Christian. I do believe in the unseen. In communication with her of us. Why we have the Holy Spirit of God who is with us, who walks with us, who, who, who speaks into our lives. I'm a bit of a mystic, I suppose. Before, uh, before this podcast, I was beating on a shamanic drum and meditating about what I wanted to talk about. And there are so many things in my mind that I was thinking, ah, you know, I could talk more about the race issue. I could talk more about, I don't know, a slew of things. And I was like, no, I want to be happy. I want to be happy today. I want to be happy in Christ. I want to enjoy God. I want to enjoy life. See, it goes on to say in verse 17, He is before all things, and in him all things hold, are hold, held together. Scientists wonder, how are all things held together? Well, it's hard to understand God. There's a, In my spirit, it kind of uh, works this way, and, and I could be totally wrong. And I... I'm definitely willing to be totally wrong. You know, our our bodies work without us really, we don't tell our heart to beat, we don't tell our stomach to digest food, we don't tell the blood to go through our veins. In the same likeness, I, I see the body of God, I see His holiness, and I see all things working together in the universe kind of just automatically through him. He might not see all these things taking place, but he can become aware of them if need be. You can become aware of, you know, stomach issues. You can become aware of heart issues or blood issues or brain issues when they come to life. And I think through prayer, through different actions, we can bring things to God, and it's like an, the Bible talks about it like a sweet incense and aroma, our prayers are. These things come to, we can make things come to light. We can bring things to the attention of God. I think when we're, we walk in joy, we're walking in joy and strength of knowing that we are also in his hand. We are also protected. We are also found in his grace. We are also found in his love. 
We are also given a peace that passes all understanding. And that peace, that peace is sweet. It'll get you higher than high. And I'm not talking about drugs, my friends. I'm talking about a peace that you know everything is okay. Because we've all been there, and I've been there just the other day. Just the other day, just rattled. Totally broken. Totally rattled. And I felt like jumping off a bridge. Why don't I just end it all right now? Takes me back seven years ago when I almost did that. But life has changed. I've changed. Things have gotten better. Things have gotten much better. My life is where I've never thought my life would be right now. I never thought I'd be in a basement of my a house recording a podcast for the world to hear. I never thought I'd be a minister of the gospel. Well, yes, I did. Been in me since I was 16. But I've had so many issues, like I said, issues that have gotten my way. Most of them wrapped around alcohol. Those things got in my way. I tore me down. I put a block between me and God. Today I want to open that back up and align myself properly. When we take the heart, the supremacy of the Son of God, and not be offended also by personality. I know many people who may listen to this may not even be Christian, but have used to be Christian or were raised Christian, but have been offended by the personalities within the church. I was at a meeting last night, and I can't say names or mention anything other than a few things. They were talking about the national anthem thing. And, and, and one gentleman uh, was talking about... Um, you know, how it was offensive and how, you know, I can't believe the people would do this. And, you know, uh, the, the, the word blacks came up a little bit, uh, you know, and I, I for a minute, I, I wanted to say something. I wanted to speak up. But, I, you know, what good is that? What good is that right now? Right now, I, I, that would just... I would not be winning any battles, probably. I'd just be picking more of a fight. I wasn't going to let that steal my joy, though, to try to understand, you know, maybe where this person's coming from. What, what, where does he get these ideas? And, you know, people were, they were just chit-chatting. But it's just an example of our differences. And you can't, we can't let those personalities, even within the church, destroy us. Because in the end, it's our relationship with God. It's our connection with the divine spirit. That's really going to mean anything at all. And Jesus shows us that way. So let's be happy today. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And let God be with you the rest of this week. Amen. Lord God, I thank you for my listeners. This has been a different episode. A happy episode. A happy episode in Christ. Let the joy of the Lord be upon each and every single one of us. Let the joy of the Lord spread through this country. Let the vision be broken and unity be, be alive. In Christ's name, amen. I want to thank you for listening to the Backyard Preacher podcast. If you like this podcast, share this podcast. Even if you didn't like this podcast, share this podcast. Bad publicity, good publicity. I'll take any publicity. Publicity, you say that enough, you mess it up. Anyway, God bless you. I thank you. We will see you next time on the Backyard Preacher podcast. This is the Reverend Nate Sprout signing out.